Where, where are you from? Pampanga. Pampanga. Mm. Pampanga is known for the food. Yes, that's why I'm in the food business. Ah. Filipino places. All the workers here, they're so full of energy. Yeah, this is Joe from the Philippines, Batanga City. <laughs> Historic Filipino town, or Hi-Fi, is one of the oldest ethnic enclaves in LA. Living in LA for several years, we hadn't really been there before, so we linked up with our Filipino friend Ryan Benson to check out everything from authentic bakeries, to cafeterias, to supermarkets, to Instagrammable hipster spots, and of course, barbecue. All right, you guys, we are getting fresh pandasal in the morning here in Historic Filipino town. Ooh, look at the hole! What do we got here, Ryan? All right, guys, so we have their best seller right here. This is the Hopia Baboy. So this has onion inside of it. It's kind of like the Filipino version of an empanada. Yo, if you guys are feeling this video so far, hit that like button, click subscribe, and turn on your notifications. For the algorithm, Hopia Baboy. Kind of has a sweeter um, mm. taste, and kind of like a a doughy texture wow. to it. With a sweet onion. A sweet onion. Not only do you have like hopia babo, which is like onion, but you can have hopia ube or hopia mongo, mm -hmm. which is a uh, mung bean or hopia, hopia mongo. mongo. Wow. Wow. Oh. Really sweet and smooth. Very sweet. Uh, I, I, very smooth. I prefer it. Yeah. Pan de sal. So it has more of the crust of a French bread, but it definitely has that sweetness like a Hawaiian roll. Right. Everybody, would you guys like to coconut yeah. to jam it up? Yo. Let's go. That's really good. Wow. Oh. That's a thick cake. What is it's that? Stretching. Is that you mochi? See it? Yeah, I've never seen that. You can literally see the sugar crystals. The, the binka. binka. Mm. Mm. Can you feel that stickiness in your mouth? Mm. Those strings that you saw? That was just straight sweetness. Here, I'm gonna make a little boat. Dude, we just used the pandasol like a little spoon or a pelican gull. It's actually really good. Whoa! That is mm. super good. Super strong chicken flavor, great tender chicken pieces. Five out of five. I, get five it, I gotta five. give it a five out yeah. of five. <laughs> All right, guys, we gotta go on to the next spot. Our next stop on our historic Filipino town, Hi-Fi Crawl, is just right next door. We're right here at Dollar Hits. It serves super authentic Filipino food, skewers, barbecue, lunch-style buffet, Dollar, Dollar Hits. Hits. This plaza was started by a family from Papangas. That's a city 55 miles north of Manila that's famous for its cuisine. They say Pampanga's has better seafood, while Manila has better beef steak, AKA beef steak. But if you talk to someone from Pampanga's, they'll let you know how proud they are of everything they serve because it's a reflection of the rich food culture that's unique to their city. Yo, you guys, we have sort of moved from Filipino breakfast to Filipino lunch. With the creation of historic Filipino town, it really became an enclave for Filipinos in LA because you have communities outside of LA like West Covina, Eagle Chino Rock, Hills, right? Eagle, Eagle Rock, but there was nothing really inside LA that had its own sanctuary for Filipino people. <laughs> Yo, I think for me, the first thing that I had to try Yo. was the shrimp jackfruit. Go, go for it, go for it. Jackfruit sometimes is used as a, as meat, a meat substitute. Sub I have to go for these mini crabs first. I know not everybody would choose this, but I just I was so intrigued by them because I didn't know uh, Filipinos ate this, to be honest. So. I think I'm gonna go with the bangus, the milkfish. Um, for the people who haven't had milkfish, how did you describe it for them? I mean, it, it's it's white fish. It has a lot of bones. The way that it's cooked with the tomatoes, the onions, and all the herbs, it helps really round out the flavor. Yeah, first, first dish. dish. Oh, this is a really salty kind of fish, but mm. this broth that it's been cooked in, wow, does it have? So much flavor in it. All right, chicken adobo. Ah. The good hallmarks of a chicken adobo is having a good quality soy sauce, mm. good quality vinegar, cooked over a long period of time so that chicken cooks down. All right, guys, I'm gonna try this goat. For me, so far, this and the adobo, super this, hit. This, that goat's good. It's I so knew good. that goat was good when I looked at it. I looked at the sauce. Anytime you have a Filipino, like, fried skin dish, you gotta dip it in the vinegar. Fried, fried chicken, chicken skin. skin. It's funny, my, my grandfather, my Lolo, out of nowhere, will be sitting in the car and he'll be like, boom, has a bag of chicharron. He'll finish it and he'll go, boom, has another one. A chicharron magician. But it, it's a perfect snack, man. It's salty, it's crunchy, and then you dip it in the vinegar and you got this like nice little tart. Okay, okay, of course, this is kind of like a tradition on our channel. Every time we have a Filipino food episode and we are able to have balut, we gotta do it. So you can just go like this, crack it open. So good. Just slurp it, get the juice. <laughs> it's so good. I, I like. I don't know what I'm looking at, but it tastes. The, it tastes the, all right. The, the <laughs> God dang it. 
<laughs> uh, we are going back to your regular standard programming. Right, right, right. Question. What's up? What is this? <laughs> I thought these were big fish balls. They kind of look like dongos, so, uh, Japanese. This is going to be like a fried sweet rice uh, that's been drizzled, I believe, in, in honey. Kalioka. So, I would say this is like the Filipino version of mochi. Wow. Now, stick, man. I think a max, I could eat one of those. No, yeah, it was almost like a low mattress. Shot Memory of foam. foam. Hell yeah. Sleep on that. Uh, I was about to say, I've, I've, never, I've never eaten memory foam before. <laughs> yeah, well, if you haven't, you know, Ryan, you're obviously not as experienced, so. Um, <laughs> Alright, guys, so we're gonna check out two more spots. Uh, we're gonna check out a Filipino grocery, and then we're gonna go on to a more hipster, more modern version of Filipino food uh, a little bit down the street. And then we're gonna come back to Dollar Hits and get some Filipino barbecue skewers. Ooh, I'm excited for that. Onwards with the journey. Let's go. All right, guys, so we're here at our next spot. We're at a Filipino grocery at Temple Plaza, owned by the same people as Dollar Hits, which is kind of funny because as we were eating in Dollar Hits, we said, oh, we want to go to the market. We want to go to the grocery too. Yeah. Okay. The lady who owns Dollar Hits came and walked us in. Yo, these ladies are kind of like, they killing it in hi-fi. Right? They're yeah, owning they're bosses. They're, they're boss ladies. Temple Seafood Market, let's go. All right, so we got over here is the Vinegar section. All types of suka. All suka. different types of suka. This is the suka, the white vinegar that I'm used to at home. Um, I yeah. actually never seen so many varieties of Filipino vinegar. This is the bagalong. This is a like a shrimp paste. You put like a little bit in like stews or something to kind of give it that little extra oomph. You don't really see this in, in many other stores. I think it's pretty unique to hear is they have a literal jewelry store in the middle of the market. Not only that, right. they have clothing for sale as well. One of the biggest things uh, that I've noticed about my Lola growing up, she's very big into jewelry. She would always buy like different little pieces, whether like stones or like things like that. This kind of comes like right into the culture. <laughs> so I'm Elvira, the owner here and the owner there. This store is a Filipino store around in Filipino community. Do you think Filipino town has the best Filipino food in the LA area? Of course! I am number, you see in LA Times, the dollar hits almost, I think, three, number three. Why is the food in Pampanga better than Manila? Because the, when I'm small, the people there is cooking and cooking and cooking. And they are famous in cooking. Alright, Pampanga. And then when you go to the Philippines, visit Pampanga. We are known for using cheap cuts of meat and making them taste really good. Pork snout, pork, pork stomach, snout, beef, beef tribe, tribe, pork ear, pork heart, chicken liver, fish ball. A lot of the stuff that we see here, we're going to try later on at Dollar Hits when they barbecue it up on the grill. Alright you guys, we are going to take a break from the Pampanga Plaza. We're just going to go down the street in Hi-Fi, historic Filipino town, check out how the second generation Filipino Americans are flipping their cuisine to make it a little bit more hipster elevated fusion while still paying tribute to their roots. Spoon and pork. Spoon and pork. Now we're meeting two chefs that immigrated from the Philippines. They're bringing a modern, aesthetically focused California twist to the food they grew up with. All right guys, so we're here at our next spot. We're at Spoon and Pork. It was kind of a funny little play on words. Instead Wait, because a lot of Filipinos say they're peas, they're F's like peas. Exactly. All right, Spoon oh. and Pork. Spoon and Pork. And they serve a lot of pork here. Here they kind of do a more modernized take on Filipino food. They still pay homage to its roots, but they do it in a little bit more upscale fashion. Let's check it out. So modern Filipino comfort food is what me and Jay grew up with. Uh, we grew up in the Philippines and these are like the flavors that we grew up with. This is our comfort food. That's the reason why we did a modern take on Filipino food. Just so we can introduce these flavors to everyone. Uh, and it helped a lot that we actually don't have any formal training. So we didn't go to school, we, didn't, so we weren't scared. We didn't care. We didn't have any rules. So before the restaurant, we were a food truck for yes. a year and a half. We're yeah. doing our part, we're trying to get our food out there. That is the plan, to get Filipino food out there, to get it recognized. Like you want people, like, probably, it's gonna happen probably in the next five to 10 years where people will be like, yo, let's go have Filipino food, you know? Right now, it's not yet at that point, but we want it to be like how Thai food and Chinese food and Japanese food is. Sam Miguel Light, not as full bodied. Okay. Did you give me the same one twice? No. No tricks. No tricks, man. Wait, what? Just guess which one it is, man. I'm gonna say this one's Sammy Gell and then the first one's Red Horse. Oh! All right. Wow. Dude, the... You came in with the clutch, three-pointer at the end. You got it at the end. You got it. 
All right, you guys, we have got an incredible spread here at Spoon and Pork. The chefs came out, they told us their story. Out of any of the Filipino restaurants that we've been to like on our, on our food journey, I think this is the most fusion Filipino item I've ever seen. Pork, pork belly, belly adobo nigiri. You have a little bit of sriracha on top. You have the Japanese furikake with the pork adobo. I think it's a perfect combination. I think my next thing up is the eggplant ensalada. You guys, I guess normally this comes uh, more- um, It's chopped up. Yeah. Real quick guys, I love how in this restaurant, they don't give you a knife. It's spoon and pork. In Filipino culture, your knife is your spoon. Mm. Eggplant, eggplant ensalada. ensalada. Mm. Oh, that eggplant is... has a really smoky flavor that comes out from being barbecued. I, I, I don't know if it's barbecued, but it's super, super smoky and it comes out like really, really prevalent. Shroom salpico. Oh, wow. Dude. There's so much flavor that comes out. You can tell there's a little bit of vinegar inside. The chives really kind of bring like a bright kind of um, herby taste to it as well. Guys, let's go with the premier dish, the pitata. This is like their crispy pata take where it's pretty much covered in chili uh, garlic sauce. Now, New York Times has rated this one of the top 15 dishes in all of LA. Patata Sundays! Patita. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Mm. This is the one. Like my, my eyes are closed right now, and I'm, I'm transported to the streets of Queens, Woodside. I'm standing, walking with my, my Lolo, and we're walking to Ihawang getting crispy pata. Like, this might be the best crispy pata I've ever had. They pretty much took the best elements from Thai chili wings, and then they put it on a delicious crispy pata. Mmm! And it just is like a whole new thing that's just um, you know, You know when I go in, bro, I gotta get, I gotta get another Lolo. Mark, God, five out of five. That was one of the dishes that was clear five Hold out of five. Hold up. Yo, I'm super excited. I've Yo, never, this dairy looks, rice. This looks like that kind of like, you know, upscale, like vegan dish that, you know, they, you would buy out West Side for like 20 bucks. Yeah. But this is the Filipino version. Coco, Coco Jack. Oh my God. You guys, I mean, mm. there's a reason that Spoon and Pork has a four out of five on Yelp with like 500 reviews. For a vegan Filipino dish, when would you have thought you would eat a good vegan Filipino dish? I didn't even think I'd ever eat a vegan Filipino dish at all. It can be done. David, you know a porridge is really thick when you can just eat it off the plate. Yeah, Not that is true. The lugaw, the kanji at Mom's Bake Shop is really good, so this is like pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah. We have our boy Danny oh, he's bringing hooking it up with the house sauces right now. What's up, yo, what's up? I am from Woodside. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. He's from Woodside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our uh, Cinnamoc. It's a spiced chili vinegar dip. Okay. And then our Calamansi Sriracha. It's a Filipino citrus sriracha blend that we both make in Awesome, house. man. Modernized Filipino rice porridge. Ooh. Yo, everything here is an elicited dump. So I feel like this is more towards the uh, Chinese style kanji. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a little bit of a more cleaner um, porridge, but I like how simple it is and then the saltiness of that chicken skin. Spoon and pork is one easily one of my favorite Filipino restaurants right now that I've ever had. I gotta give the whole restaurant a five out of five. Wow. I've, and I rarely ever do that. This is my favorite spot that we've been to on any of our food journeys for Filipino food, hands down. Come here for amazing Filipino modern food. You can't beat it. We got one more stop on this food tour. We're gonna head back to Dollar Hits to get some barbecue skewers. Before we go back to Dollar Hits, back to the historic Filipino town, we're gonna see 200 pound cameraman John try this crispy petita. No joke, Spoon and Pork was amazing. They deserve a lot of credit for taking risks and trying to push culture forward in uncharted waters. All right, you guys, we have arrived back at Dollar Hits. As you can see, they have the grill set up now, so. I've never barbecued my own Filipino skewers ever in my life, and this is an amazing way to end off the video. And we got, we got, the, uh, we got the Filipino music banging. Banging. We have chicken feet, we have chicken butt, we have pork ear, we have pork intestine. I'm really excited to go and put this on the grill. Hi guys, I got us a full gambit right here. We got 16 different skewers. Ooh. 
We're gonna cook it ourselves and Hell then sit yeah. down and eat some Filipino food. All right, All right I'm, to, I'm learning from my man right here, but from just from watching. And when you come here, better uh, take a shower later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You wash your clothes out. Yeah, yeah. This is my dog clothes. So. <laughs> so now we're gonna put some stuff on What's the grill here. So we're, we got the pig ear here. This is the helmet. We got some chicken feet. Yeah, that's the one they call the Danita. Oh, Danita. We're gonna get a nice sear on everything here. Make sure it gets like that charcoal taste, and then we're gonna flip it over, and then I'm gonna serve it to you guys. So, all right, hell yeah. Let's get this barbecue off. What makes it really cool about Dollar Hits? This really kind of brings it back to its like traditional roots, like as street vendors in Manila or another part of the Philippines, where everybody's kind of going from vendor to vendor, getting different types of food. So, this is really cool to kind of bring it back home. Why are you fanning it? Does that make it hotter? Yeah, so you, fire needs oxygen in order to burn, so you're really trying to stoke the uh, the coals and kind of bring more heat. And it's even sort of like a gregarious activity too, you, you got to share the Yeah, coal. I mean, that's what Filipino culture is all about, sharing food. It's a community. Okay, we each in our hand have the skewer of choice. Dollar, dollar hits. hits. It's a in dollar, it's a hit. In historic Filipino town. Mmm, that was good. Pork mm. skewer is good. Okay. This long and easy. Huh? Wow. At the end of the day, we had only spent a few hours in high five, but it felt like I had learned so much about authentic Filipino culture. It was almost like we got zapped and transported to the Philippines for a moment. One thing I did take away for sure is the old school and new school styles are both in good hands. What stands out to you about the hi-fi journey that we just went on? We got to experience Filipino food in so many different types of ways. We got to try pastries, we got to try bread, we got to try traditional food, and then we got a more elevated take on the food. And then we finished it all off with barbecue, which is something that both of you guys have never had before. So I think you really got the full spectrum of Filipino food and culture today. To me, everybody's been super welcoming. I learned a lot. I mean, I have we had a conversation with uh, the guy previously who was grilling, because he looked like really Chinese. I was like, are you Chinese? And he goes, well, I consider myself Filipino, but I'll just tell you this, there's people in my family that look, have the whole range of looks. No matter how you look, if you're Filipino, you're Filipino and you're like family together. Yeah. And you can all get together and enjoy the same food. Come to historic Filipino town, experience a culture that is revolved around food. We sit down and we eat food together, we share food, and as a culture, I think there's nothing like it in this world. All right, you guys, in the comment section below, make sure, first of all, you give us a big thumbs up, and then number one, let us know what is a Filipino food that we need to try that we didn't show today, and number two, what is another ethnic neighborhood around America that we got to check out. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video. Check out Ryan's information down below. We are in historic Filipino town in LA, and it was all love. So until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Talking about how everybody was going for the sardines. Oh my god. For canned foods, you know, because sardines. Even the rice, even uh, the 50 cabans, 50 sacks, almost only 30 minutes. Oh, no gone more. in 30 minutes. Yeah. Wow. Do I look beautiful? What's up? Do I look beautiful? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you do. Yes. You do. Of course. If I'm of course. not beautiful, don't, don't tell. Okay.